Hello and welcome to Blip Paint. As soon as you start Blip Paint, you'll see there's a few memory options here, depending on what kind of uh, thing you're going to be working on. Uh, if you want no undos, then it will load right away. If you want just a few undos, maybe you want to sort of restrict how many plots you have so that you can save out that data eventually, or you want medium or high mode. I'm going to go straight into medium. So first off, you'll see that it's in painting mode, which is just straight good old painting. Now I'm going to increase the catch up just to make sure this brush follows the pen a little bit better. If you want a boost, press spacebar and you'll notice this FPS jump up. If it doesn't jump up, then press spacebar again and it's better to go down to the sort of stabler mode. Right, so you can see I can brush away here. I'm going to do control R so that the brush actually follows. If I hold down X, I can stretch the brush. And if I do Shift R, I can flip that 90 degrees. Okay, backspace clears everything, including memory. And as you can see, I can paint away. If I decrease the spacing, I'll have a bit better control of that. Now there's three modes here. These three lights, if you press D or use the mouse wheel, you can change into this other mode where it switches between the two colors. And the third mode will basically mix the colors based on the grayscale value inside the brush. So for example, this one, Let's use, scale it up a bit. You can see the grayscale values actually get mixed between these two. So if I change that, I press W to flip the colors. I get a nice grayscale interpretation of what's going in that brush, okay? So I'm gonna clear that. Now I really wanna talk about the grids. So if you press G, it switches straight into this pixel grid and it goes into stamp mode and that just makes it easier to uh, plot these down. And you can choose your colors and things. Right, it's still in this mode. Um, just press D to go into that one, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, so we got that grid. If you press G again, it goes into the finer grid where you can really do some pixel art. Now, the res the resolution of this is 320 of these little squares by 200. And that's like a very old school resolution. And there's the Arnie palettes here, if you want to use those. That's another one as well. And just a couple of custom palettes. Okay, and the original one. So you can still plot away with your usual brushes and things. You can scale them up and plot them down and you know go back into stamp mode or whatever but basically when you press these grids it sets everything up based on the grids when you first go into them and you just override them by choosing something else so that's that grid mode and this is isometric mode and it's easy enough just to pop out of isometric because like it snaps to the grid here but as soon as you turn the grid off it will stop snapping and you can use any brush you want so you can even use this brush, but the, the whole point of it is that it sticks to the grid, you know? So uh, if I hold down F here, I can do any sort of glass effect. If I press five for half opacity, you can see I can get a nice little build up there. Um, so initially when you go into each grid, it's gonna give you the default brush. In this case, it's just the square brush, this one here, and this one, it's the same brush, but smaller. It automatically sets up the size for you, and it changes the way the brushes increase in size as well to try and best match the grid as much as possible. Okay, um, so I'm gonna press grid again. That's isometric, and it does bring you to the isometric set of brushes as well. I'm trying to make it convenient for you to, to sort of use things. Uh, it also puts you into stamp mode for this so that you only plot one tile down at a time. It still randomizes them like that, but if you do Shift S, you can come out of that and kind of shuffle them up. And you can even just sort of paint around, right? And do whatever you want. So you can kind of break it a bit. Um, but coming out of grid mode basically takes you back to painting wherever you want. So it's just pressing G, takes you into those modes, right? And that remembers the last brush you were using uh, other than that. The last mode I want to show you, so, there was another grid in between. This is just a guide grid. This one just shows you um, where the best place to put things are, like these circles here. 
that's a good place to put uh, key points. Uh, you've got this, you know, center point, you know, your key areas over here, and it's just really a kind of layout grid for different things. It is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight divisions this way, in case you wanted to make up brushes, uh, or even 16. So you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifty, sixteen. And the reason for that is when you make up brushes, I'm just going to jump to this part of the grid because this is already set up to make brushes of four. So I'm just going to press H to bring the UI back and go back to this standard brush, right? And let's say I was to make up some sort of brush here. You can see it's automatically went into onion skin mode. If I press K, I can toggle that. So K will toggle that on and off. It tells you that here anyway, right? And that just helps me make up kind of variations. I can say, well, there's one, and then this one's going to do this, and then this one's going to do that, and then uh, this one's just a short one like that. And if I hide everything and the grid, you see I've got this set of four, right? And I can just go ahead and save that. Right, I'll save that as test, uh, test strip, right? And if I go over to my brush, brushes where there's like these empty ones and switch this to four, because that's how many I'm gonna bring in. I'm gonna bring in a, 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 a sprite set of four. As long as it's across the way like that, you can make them in Photoshop or whatever. So I'm just gonna go to or is it test strip? So this is the full image. You don't want to use that. That saves the whole picture. But this one is the, the sprite four, right? So you bring that in and automatically it's gave you that brush. The pivot might not be in the right place, but if you press two on the keypad, on the number pad on the right, it's went to the right point. Okay, so five would be the pivot in the middle. And if you look at that grid again, you can see that, yeah, the pivot of these is where I've got them here. But if I press five, I can offset that. And you can see when I press those numbers, it also offsets up here in the sort of brush window. Right, so I can clear everything. I've got a new brush here, saved out. I can use it again and again. I can load it in any time I want. And I can get brushing with this. Right, just now it's just doing like tonal differences between these two but it's only choosing the first color so I'll press D that's this one and that tonal varies between these two right so it multiplies the base color this green color with these two and a little bit of rotational range and maybe a little bit of scatter opacity and size let's make the pressure affect those and clear everything and I can kind of just draw in some noisy shapes right and if I press D again it's going to color these based on the grayscale value so let's make up another one so I'll do G G G G okay until I get to this I'm going to use I can use that very same brush if I want but I'm going to use just the standard brush again and I just want to make sure I've got size by pressure size by opacity and I want to choose two colors this time right I want a black and white effect so I'm just gonna go to let's just go to that right and I'll press W to swap them in a second so I'm gonna do a little thing like that and I can press W to swap them and if I hold down L I can actually work on these locked pixels right just like that so only paints with those pixels, so I can't exactly go out the line. Right, I'm going to do that again. I'm going to press W to swap back to black. All right, and make that kind of go thinner. And then hold down. I'm going to just toggle onion skin mode. Okay, so I press K there. I'm going to hold down L, W to swap the colors. And just draw in some bits like that. And then... W. Let's just turn off memory mode. We don't need that right now. So I just pressed O. 
and hold down L, W to swap and just paint in some little highlights here W to swap again and this one can be like this and hold down L while I paint okay I'm gonna save that I'll just save over the one that I made a minute ago okay test strip I'll just get rid of the PNG because it adds it in automatic in fact I'll get rid of the IMG part as well all of that should overwrite those other ones Right, I still got the one I made earlier loaded in, but if I right click it and get rid of it again and it's gone forever now. Okay, so I'm going to load that in. I'm going to hide the UI. I'm going to press G and backspace to clear everything. And now I've got this brush, right? So if I press D to go into this mode, it's going to base it based on the grayscale value. This one is going to be where there's white and this one where there's going to be black and you'll see what happens. Let's just increase that so we can see it a bit better. And I'm just going to turn off rotational range. Now let's increase the spacing. So you can see it's drawing these out. And if I press W, I can get the opposite effect. So it's super easy to make up brushes now. And it randomizes them. Okay, so another new thing that I've added, other than these isometric tiles, I've added a whole bunch of uh, little drawing tiles here, little drawing sort of outline. And what we'll do, what it will do automatically is swap the, uh, change the colors to black for you, right? Um, and just make sure you're on the right mode. I mean, you could go into the mode where it mixes them up if you wanted that, or the grayscale mode, which just draws black. Or this mod. I, may, I might make it so it just switches directly to this one because it makes more sense. Now I'm going to fill the background just with a gradient and I'm going to start like drawing. So I'll do Shift S just to make sure I'm in stamp mode. So is that one down there, right? There'll be switches for this later. But I'm just going to dot in some brushes. I'm going to turn on memory mode actually and, and uh, just clear that layer. You can see I can dot these down. And maybe some chain links somewhere, maybe a little fence. Now if I do Shift S to turn on normal painting mode and a little bit of spacing, I can see how this little chain link's gonna look. Right, so this is kind of like sketching, right? Shift S, back to that mode, and just dot in a few of these. I can do Shift and R, and then hold down X, size it up with holding down S, and make a little bit of a fence part there. Okay, um, got these branches, so I'm just going to add in one of those. Let's add one here and let's scale it down a bit and use E and R to rotate. And we've got these little petals here. So I'm going to do Shift S to turn on, turn off the stamp mode. Uh, I'll do rotational range and scatter. And you'll see that I can place these down and make a kind of tree effect. The same here. Now I'm going to hold down Z while I'm brushing, or Z, if you prefer to call it that, and that just erases bits, because I felt there was a bit too much there. Okay, I'm going to add in some rocks now, so I'll just do Shift S to turn, off stamp, turn on stamp mode, and plot some little rocks down. Again, if I don't like which one goes down, I can just undo it. change the scale a bit. You can also do size by pressure. Okay, um, got this little debris 
one for any sort of twigs and branches that have fallen. Now everything's going the same direction. You see up here it says flippy X mode, shift X. So if you do shift X, that means when you plot down, it's going to change the direction. Sometimes it'll be left, sometimes it'll be right. So that's pretty handy. I just want a few of these down, not too many. and we've got little pebbles here as well all right and we've got our big old tree I'm going to add that in over here and shift s we're in stamp mode that's fine plot that down and we've got some little little plants here as well I'm just going to plot some of these down Let's plot some in the foreground. All right, and what's next? We've got some little twigs. Let's dot some of those down under this tree. And this one. Uh, is there anything we've not used yet? We've got these new rocks as well. Let's add couple of those in. Oh, that's a bit big. Cool. Um, some other rocks. I think we used those. And even more rocks. These are kind of flatter, these ones. Now you can hold down X at any time and make things even flatter looking. Just gives you that kind of perspective type look. Let's hide the UI for working on some bits here. Right, so now it's time to add in a proper sky. So I'm going to choose this color and this one and then just right click that. And you see I've got this sky here. Right, it just fills in the backdrop. So now I'm going to paint with a normal brush. Just my usual first one here. And I'm going to choose some sort of greeny blue tones and I'm going to press D to go into this mode which mixes between the two and I'm going to start painting. I'm going to turn off memory mode just for the sake of you know I don't really need it and make sure I've got a little bit of size and turn off the stamp mode and I can start to just like paint this in I'm just being fairly loose with it. Because I can always go over with uh, Z, holding down Z. I can just erase those bits. But for the style, it doesn't really matter. This looks quite good. Being a little bit out of lines here and there is okay. Hide the UI so I can see. So just H hides that. I'm going to use a little bit of ninja brushing so that when I go faster, the brush gets bigger. And it just helps me kind of speed up my workflow a little bit. Okay. And now that I've done that, I can add a little bit of shading. So I'm just going to choose a slightly darker green and just paint in some darker tones. I'm going to switch to this mode and do W just so that I'm using definitely using this darker tone. And I'm going to press 6 for a little bit of opacity. You don't see it so well when the spacing is very low because so much uh, brush getting overlaid there, it just becomes opaque again. So I'll just go over some bits. 
going to be really quick now because I don't want the video to drag on too much. I know that you're obviously keen to get started with this. Okay, let's get some browns and indeed go into this mode. Zero to make it fully opaque and I'm going to turn off that ninja brushing because that was a bit too harsh. You see I went out of lines a bit and now it's a little bit trickier. So let's scale it down. I don't mind going out of lines, I think it's a good style. Right, so now I can choose this leaf. It might not make much sense to the, to the style, but I'll paint them in anyway. I'm just going to do some kind of autumn tones, maybe like these two. Make sure I'm in this middle mode where it splits between the two, and then Control R so it follows the brush. Right, and scale it down a bit so it makes sense. And Shift R until it does what you want it to. A little bit of spacing would be good here actually. Uh, scatter and spacing. I'm just going to delete some of that with Z. Right, and then I can paint that in. It doesn't look like the same style. But that's okay, you can always like draw over it. And this is purely just for a, a demo to show you what's possible. Now I'm just going to make it bigger and press X to make it sort of flatten. And then I'm going to do Control R to turn off that effect. I'm just going to scatter some of them on the ground here. And press 4 for a little bit of opacity. Right, and then I can play around with the rotational range as well. Right, I'm going to paint in some clouds really quickly uh, using this brush. I'll choose this and a light blue. And make sure it's in middle mode. I'm going to press 5 and I'm going to use X to sort of bend it in a little bit. And let's make it quite big and I can scatter in some clouds in the background here. Now they don't quite look like clouds, these ones. So I'm going to go for this one and really low opacity bit of scale range and let's choose those two tones and I can just dot in some sky and I guess there's a lot more colour work that I need to do here as well I'm just going to choose some crazy brushes and see what I can get. Yeah, just pop these into the rocks. It's all just style, isn't it? It's just adding style to what I've got already. And a little wooden posts. So you can see Blip Paint's got a lot happening. It's got different paint modes and lots of brushes. Um, loads of power for making really quick art and not much to worry about. So I guess in that sense there's no excuses to make you know really nice stuff. Uh, feel free to use it for your work or whatever. It's free just now. It may become paid later when I feel like I've done you know more than enough to justify it. But for now, it is what it is, and you're getting it all free, and you can make stuff. It saves the image out, use it as a backdrop, use it for making a, a kind of narrative scene or anything like that. And I hope you really enjoy using it. If you do use it, please leave a comment, a nice comment, or review inside uh, the Blip Paint Itch page. Uh, that would be really helpful because that would help, you know, promote things a bit. And see, yeah, I'm just making a mess now. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoy using it. And thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.